You know, the lighting really sucks in my room today. It looks like I have like a red fucking tinge on my camera. So let's film outside. This time you're gonna get one of the rooms behind me to my house. So let's talk about innovation in Yu-Gi-Oh because it's never been better, I would argue. And I know it's better because it makes all of us hard. And I know it makes you hard because you're sub to this channel. Let's dive on into it, shall we? the ever-living boo-boo stain out of that like button and that subscribe button too i meant to say so that we can get to 900 and eventually 1000 subscribers ladies and gentlemen it is a beautiful day out here in florida it's about 90 degrees i'm always sweating my nuts off a little bit and my anus may not be relaxed but ladies and gentlemen what is making me relax is innovation in Yu-Gi-Oh. now the reason why i bring this up is because i actually saw a deck profile this morning from oblivion games in tampa where in this 3v3 case tournament that they had the first place deck was a sprite deck now before you click off watch until the end hear me out i'm seeing that watch time watch until the end and and then just hear what I have to say before you comment. Trust me, if you watch until the end, you're gonna get a much better idea of what I'm talking about. So it was a sprite deck list. However, what it was playing was very interesting. It was playing three copies of Unexpected Die and it was playing two copies of Psychic Kappa. Now Psychic Kappa is literally just a booty booty butt cheek monster from Magic Ruler and Spell Ruler. And it's a level two normal monster that is water and aqua. So you can make totally awesome with the damn thing. Uh, you can play Unexpected Die and if the opponent ashes it, you can play Triple Tactics Talent, rip a card on another hand or draw two to continue your plays and get all of that gas to the floor. Cause even with inflation, we gotta get as much gas as we can in the tank. <laughs> um, and and so you can also just normal summon it, unexpected die out the other one, make totally awesome on your third summon. Uh, or you can go norm, uh, unexpected die the Kappa, normal summon the Swap Frog, dump Rodent Toten, and then you can make a totally awesome that way as well. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because it, we're near the end of a format. Like, let's just call it what it is. It's the end of a format. We've had our national championship. And right now we're in that little in between area or what I like to call like the twilight zone, the, the middle area where, or gray area rather, where we're waiting for the new ban list, which it's been exactly three months on the dot at the time of making this video because today's the fucking 17th and still no ban list at the time of me recording this, maybe it drops later today. Um, but we're also, you know, waiting for the ban list. We're waiting for the next core set, that being Darkwing Blast, which comes out in about two months. And people are being very innovative with, all. is that a fucking bug? No, it wasn't a bug. <laughs> people are being very innovative with uh, sprites and tier elements and all the other fun cards and toys that we had to play without the power of the elements because it's really that great of a set we get so many new things to play with you know we've been seeing sprite builds that play the adventure engine we're seeing sprite builds that play vanilla monsters like psychic kappa i've been testing with this card called ipira that literally allows you to have a deco talker heat soul in your deck and by that i mean ipira itself because it's a level two water reptile that whenever it's summoned once per turn you get to draw a card so you can summon it it's a level two you draw a card then you can special summon a sprite and make your plays instead of reviving the totally awesome if you don't need the second negate off the toad you can revive the ipr from your graveyard with sprite elf and draw another card you have a built-in deco talker heat soul into the deck that could most likely depending on how many hand traps you're playing draw you into another hand trap to stop your opponent's plays there's so many innovations right now going on with the meta that nothing is really set in stone and we're not just seeing this with sprite we're seeing this with a lot of different decks we're seeing sky strikers playing offerings to the doomed and change of heart we're seeing other decks besides sky striker play things like offerings Brings to the doom. We're seeing a lot of rogue decks topping. We're so, we saw an Elder Lich deck. I think it came in like top eight at a regional where it played like what, like eight spells. The rest were traps, and it only played two monsters, and it was Golden Lord. Like there was no Heavenly Sky Prison or anything, and it was side decking Pot of Extravagance, and it was main decking one copy of Drowning Mirror Force. You can't tell me that that's not innovation in the game. And really, this tends to happen a lot near the end of a format, especially when we're overdue for a ban list like this. People are going to get creative. People are going to get innovative, especially when, you know, there's no YCSs to have a deck list to follow on or like what's considered the best. If you remember when Sword Soul first came out, people were debating, oh, you know, do you play it with the Adventure Engine? Do you play the 10 version? Do you play a different version? Because there was a couple different ways to build it based upon what we saw in the OCG. And what came to the consensus was that Tenny was the best way to build the deck. Similar with Flunderies, we see a few different tech cards coming into the deck here and there. We've seen people try out Dark Cymorg. We've seen people play the other Cymorg cards. And 
it's a great time in Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, ignoring the fact of how much things cost, blues currently being $85 to $95, they tend to fluctuate up and down right now. Ignoring the price tags and just solely looking at the innovation and what's happening in the game right now is really healthy for the game and should speak to how great the format is. You know, a lot of people are saying, oh, Sprite's gonna be tier zero, it's gonna be bad, everyone's gonna be playing Sprite. And we're seeing some regionals where like the majority of tops are Sprites, but it's not like every single event back to back to back, it's just tier zero Sprite, tier zero tier element. You know, we're, we're not seeing that. And that's good for the game because you don't want tier zero formats. The only thing that tier zero formats really do is that they help show problems with the game that Konami can then fix via the ban list. But it's not something that you want all the time. You know, you look at the OCG, when Sprite came out there, they were tier zero. They were taking over 50% of tops in the majority of tournaments. Then tier elements took that spot after Sprites got hit. Sprite was still competing, but it wasn't the tier zero deck that it was. It was more like tier one to 1.5. And then tier elements came in, especially with that new milling support that we're getting in November and Magnificent Mavens. And it just dominated everything. And I do still feel to this day that once we get Magnificent Mavens, I do believe tier elements will become a tier zero deck just because we've never seen milling support like this. We've never seen support like this in general in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's gonna be fucking bonkers, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, it's it's still a fun time at the end of the day, right? You know, do I want a ban list? Yeah, I do. I, I, I do think that the format's stale, but the innovation helps to push it to where you're not just seeing the same shit every game. You know, am I saying that you can play Dark Magician? No. Am I saying that you can play Grimaju? Yes, absolutely. Is anyone even playing Grimaju right now? No, but it has the potential to work very well. Um, it's it's a fun time in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's, it's a time to be alive. Am I bored with the game? Yeah, because I mean, I'm playtesting Sprite. I know the combos in and out. I know how to play around Super Poly. Like I, I know these things, but I mean, at least we have some innovation and that's not really a bad thing. So ladies and gentlemen, please let me know down in the comments below, what are you doing right now in this you know, I guess time off from Yu-Gi-Oh! or in this like little Twilight Zone era before we get a balance. Are you just taking a break? Are you preparing for regionals? You know, what, what is it really that you're doing right now? So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.